What's promising about Tua? Not sure. That he's recovering? That doesn't really mean anything. He's recovered from all the other injuries and he gets injured again. It's the recovery it does not help durability. You understand? There's no way that that hip will ever be as strong as it originally was. It isn't like Tommy John's surgery. You get right. that new vein, you get that new tendon in there, and you're ready to take on the world. And he's a guy that would blow out his arm again, and you'd have another Tommy John. So I, I'm not sure what you mean is promising. I don't. To me, when I look at Tua, I've told you guys this. I look at a sack of injuries. I don't believe he'll stay healthy in the NFL. It, remember, Drew Brees had a shoulder injury. That's it. It wasn't that Drew Brees blew out his ankle and then had to have it surgically repaired, and then the next year blew out the other ankle and had to have it surgically surgically repaired, and then had a knee injury, and had a broken finger, and had a wrist injury, and then had a hip injury. And a, No, 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 no. We, we got to... We, we, we need to separate the two now, okay? There's nothing about Tua that is positive at all. When it comes to his injury history, big deal that the hip heals. That means nothing to me. I don't care what the doctor tells me. I, I know what I see. I see a fragile player that breaks down on a consistent basis behind an all-American college football offensive line. So if you're going to break down on a consistent basis and you've got these two ankles repaired and that hip repaired, I I just, I, I expect you to break down again in the NFL. I mean, Tua is the kind of guy that I don't – I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't survive a preseason. I know he can pass. I know he's a phenomenal young man, but I also know that his body – brother, it's put together like with scotch tape. I mean, he he makes Humpty Dumpty look durable. So, you know, you're asking the wrong guy. Remember, I got off the Tua bandwagon before the hip injury. I didn't need the hip injury. It's documented. Go back and listen to all the podcasts. You'll hear me. I'm off the Tua bandwagon. I'm done. I'm not drafting him at five. So I'm, I'm the wrong guy to ask about Tua because I've made my mind up that he's not durable enough for the NFL. So if you draft him, that's why I keep saying over and over and over again, draft a second quarterback. Okay? So I I don't find anything positive when it comes to injury history with Tua. Nothing at all. I don't trust him. I don't trust it. I'm sorry. I don't trust his body. Let me, let me put it the right way because he's a great kid. He's a phenomenal young man. But I don't trust the body, man. I just don't. And if, and if you trust the body, then you're, you're easily sold on things in life, I guess. That's the way I got to look at it. You're, you're forcing yourself to think positive about it. Because when it comes to Tua and his injury history... There's nothing, not one thing positive about it. Nothing at all. The only thing positive is that he can walk for his life and he can enjoy his life. But when it comes to football, there's not a damn thing positive about that kid. He's going to break down every single time. He's only been in college football for two years starting, and he's got four, four lower body operations already. Come on, man. I hope... That somebody from the one of the teams absolutely falls in love with this kid. He has great uh, medical records come back. Everything's good to go. 
and somebody wants to trade up to five to take Tua. That Love it. would be so perfect. Well, I don't know. Uh, that would be great, too. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know about trade for five. I, I don't mind if the, if the Dolphins actually take a quality player at five and get themselves a starting tackle. I, you know, you can only trade down so much. You can only get so many picks. Sure, you can do it if they offer you a boatload, but you also are going to have to re-sign all those picks, and you're not going to be able to. And then when you lose them in compensatory, you're only going to get a third rounder back at most, not a first rounder. So you're still going to lose out. So you got to be careful. Now, you can't have too many first rounders because it just becomes a cap problem down the line if by chance you do hit on a bunch of them and then everybody knows, oh, you can't keep them, you're going to lose them. So they're not going to offer you nearly as much. So you have to be very careful with, with, with the way you handle the trade down stuff. And at one point or another, you're a top five. You could get a difference maker. And let me explain something. If two and Herbert climb into the top five, that drops a quality player to Miami. Because all of a sudden, three quarterbacks will get taken in the first four picks. So you're going to have the best tackle, defensive end, pass rushing linebacker, shut down corner available to you at five. That's There's nothing wrong with getting a building block that you can plug and play right away. It's pretty awesome. Well, there's those picks that are what, like I think six, seven, eight, somewhere in there. There's two teams, the, car, uh, the Chargers and uh, the Colts. And then I think there's somebody as far back as number 13. I mean, to just slide back there and maybe get their one or two for next year, like take it next year. You yeah, know, I what know I mean? but I, I, I don't know if they want that player. We're playing fantasy now. We're right. playing. We're not. We're not even reality now at this point. So I don't know what they're gonna want. So for for Dominic out there, there's nothing positive whatsoever on the Tua injury front. I don't care how healthy they tell me he is.